Anytime we talk about goals and what we want to accomplish, it's important to outline the how, right? So announcement, this is going to be once you've got them in. When we're thinking about this stuff, we want them to promote the book, but how can we get people's email addresses? How can we get their phone numbers? How can we get them to follow us on social media? If you think about Apple or PlayStation, like people are standing in line overnight for a phone that probably does one feature different than the, the brand before. It's because they do a great job of announcing and a great job of building the anticipation and the hype. It's important that in entrepreneurship, we understand that it's okay to be you. Hi, I'm Coach Nick. Entrepreneurs call me when they want to launch, grow, or scale their business. This is Nick, Fix My Biz. So, next week is gonna be a soft launch. All right, your official launch, you need to have an event. So, let me tell you where I feel a lot of entrepreneurs go wrong. They launch their product or service, and then they say, okay, we're open, and just expect people to buy. But there's nothing to get excited about an event. It's the reason why restaurants have grand openings. It's the reason why um, real estate agents bring people to show the houses, mm -hmm. because we're bringing them to an event. So what event, your launch event, what event can we create to launch this book? Hmm. I'm thinking like right after the momentum that we picked up from the February 13th event, add something right after that and mm -hmm. just do an event just promoting the I Got Bro with the book, the brand, the mark, I mean, the materials, everything that's underneath it. Okay. Bro. But what type of event, though? Mm. And think about the reader, right, who would be interested in the book. So, parents, yeah. right, even though this book is, is this book for youth or is it for, like, who's the audience? It's, uh, you know what, it's a wide gap. I'm saying from 8 to about 16. Okay. But the person that's buying the book, that's yeah. going to be interested in buying the book because it's 16, 8, 8 to 16, they're not going to be interested right off the bat. It's going to be the parents. It's the parents. So what event th maybe can they bring their son to um, would be attractive? Save our youth type. Mm, okay. So save our youth. Like maybe bringing in different speakers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Different speakers, uh, potentially a church uh, or someone. Okay. A pastor or something like that. Some sort of spiritual figure. Some type of, yeah, some sort of spiritual figure. Maybe you could have it at a church. Mm-hmm. At a church, too. Uh. Maybe the event can, you know, kind of be like a tour, right? So, like, you can go to different churches, mm. you know, and, and again, I don't want to put... Right now, we're in idea phase, right? Right, right. Um, Figure out what, what we have resources for and what we could do. But, like, you could do the event at one church, and then go to the next church and do the event again. Mm -hmm. um, host it for organizations, right? right? So for instance, let me tell you about my client, Ariel. Mm -hmm. So she sells skin and beauty, uh, skin and beauty products, mm -hmm. organic skin and beauty products. And um, the event that I had her do was like, um, you know, like those sipping paints mm -hmm. that people do for their birthdays. But instead of sipping paint, it's like sipping shop. So she gets with one of her friends. She says, hey, invite. It's kind of like Mary Kay. It's called the Mary Kay Method. Right. Invite 10 people. You know, you, you get a percentage of sales, right? It's always about what's in it for me. And, you know, you have a good time. So now people have taken birthday parties, anniversaries, um, uh, uh, bridal showers, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Invite her to come in and they can try the different products. But now she has also, like, different things, activities that they can do. Oh, and by the way, if you want to purchase any of these products, my table set up on the side. That's similar to what I was doing for spa parties, because the hostess was always free. So yeah. If you went, and I would give you your complimentary spa services. Yeah. yeah. So we could do the same thing similarly for the book, too. Mm. And keep in mind, your launch event doesn't have to always be physical. It can also be virtual. Mm. So like Christian was talking about the book club, mm -hmm. you can also create that for the community. We're launching on this date. You got a free membership into the book club. You know, maybe create some sort of value, other value around that outside of just the book. Because okay. the goal is to sell the book. 
right. and then you know you you have meetups you know you can either meet virtually or you can meet at the local Barnes and Noble we're gonna talk about chapter one mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying um, mm-hmm. coffee on me mm-hmm. <laughs> making sense makes how you sense. how you feeling what takeaways do you have so far I mean I'm loving everything that you're saying right now especially like the uh, the different meetups with the uh, save the youth um, bouncing around the different churches. I don't want to make it a straight up churchy thing, mm-hmm. you know. But that's that, that's a great idea. That's, that's really a great idea. Yeah. And yeah. That's those are that, the type of the parents though that are going to care a lot about their kids. Absolutely. So you know you don't want to make it a church thing, but you you gotta look at your audience. You gotta look at mm-hmm. who's actually going to really purchase and buy. And then they have friends that are not fully into church either way and they're gonna tell their friends mm-hmm. that still care about their kids. You know, mm-hmm. I have a I have a thirteen year old, so mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I want mm-hmm. my kid to read something like this because they need more male influence in their life. Absolutely. But we don't go to a church. Mm-hmm. So I would still find out from somebody who regularly attends in a church like that. So mm-hmm. but yeah, you, you you know you could start off like that. You know, there's other things where kids are really excited about. You got the bouncy uh what's the bounce place? Um, oh, jump, jump the jump, jump places. That's why I take my daughter to jump world. Huh? Kids love the jump world stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and main event, like you have to think about those type of businesses, yeah, you know. Yeah, and then yeah. you can go into a private room and have a presentation after they have all their fun and excitement, right. you know. So, you know. That was a great idea. And that positions your motivational speaking yeah. because now you can film that content and use that as a reel to send out to companies that want to bring you in. So, mm-hmm. product. It's, it's all it's all lining up and it expands, right? Listen, starting a business can be complicated, but it doesn't have to be. There's three things every entrepreneur needs to know when they're getting ready to start their business. Number one, that there's a difference between starting a business and launching a business. You don't want to just start a business. You need to put a strategic plan in place so that you can actually accomplish the results that you're looking for. Number two, where are you going to get your first customers? And not just any customers, but customers who will pay you a premium. And then number three, where to get funding for your business. If you're looking to grow the business, you need something to start it with. So if you are a new or aspiring entrepreneur, or you're looking to launch a new product or service, I want to invite you to my free training where I'm teaching you how to launch your business in the next 90 days or less using the resources you have, okay? Because it gets real out here. So if you want to attend that training, make sure you click the link in the description below and I will see you in the training. Now back to the episode. All right, so now that we got past the the initial phases of marketing and we decided, okay, we're gonna decide on a launch event, right? Mm-hmm. Now here's where the meat and potatoes happen, mm-hmm. right? We gotta get these people to show up to this event mm-hmm. or to stay in front of them, keep the product in front of them. So R stands for remind, mm-hmm. all right? So remind via email, Email marketing, text message marketing, DM, right? Like you go hard in this because the harder you go in reminding people to show up, the more people that shows up for the event. Here's the thing about sales, right? So people got sales kind of misconstrued. Mm -hmm. If you go into selling, understanding you're not going to close everyone, then your focus becomes well, how many, how many people can I get here so that the math is math then, right? Mm-hmm. So like if you know that out of every 100 people that I talk to, 10, ten people buy the book, mm-hmm. then now if I want to make 20 sales, oh, I need to get in front of 200 people. Mm-hmm. I want to make 30 sales, I need to get in front of 300 people, right? Mm-hmm. And so then it becomes, okay, well, now instead of me just doing these events at a random church, how can I partner with mega churches, right? right. I got thousands of people, right? Because I know that if I get in front of these many people that I'll make this many sales, right? Um, so, but you gotta get the people to show up, which is why it's important to get them on your email list. And then here's where most of the sales will take place. This very last phase, which people forget about, which is thank. It's called thank, but what this really is, is nurturing. All right, and you're mainly going to do this via email, email marketing. 
And this is just saying, hey, you know, you missed the event. You know, we had a great event. Here's some recap pictures. Oh, and by the way, I announced my book, you know, and we talked about the book. Here's the code for 10% off when you go and purchase it now in the next 72 hours, mm -hmm. right? We still want you to have that. And then now we create nurture sequences to drive people back to purchasing the book. Mm -hmm. How you feel about all this? I think that's critical, the whole layout. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot. And I, I was spotted like, in my thinking, but how it's laid out, I'm like, oh, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Know? So, um, so again, there's different mechanisms. We only have so much time today. There's so many different mechanisms that you can use. Mm -hmm. and, and the goal is, you know, you're going to make most of your sales, honestly, in the thank you and the follow up. Mm -hmm. So those people who didn't buy at this event or didn't buy at the speaking engagement or didn't buy when you went live with that influencer, mm -hmm. that's why it's so important to try to get their email address so that you can continue to try to, you know, they used to say it takes about seven times for somebody to see something before they make a purchase. I feel like that's still true, you know, and most people forgot about that. They feel like if they don't get that sell on the first time, they failed. But it's just because you didn't get in front of them enough. Maybe they wanted to buy, but maybe they fell asleep or doing something else. So how can you keep it in front of them? So I, I know without, we're not going deep, deep into the details, but I'm saying as far as like this event that I have coming up, and I know you guys mentioned QR codes, which is critical. Mm -hmm. Like, how would you, how would I capture that information? Like, with, if all these people are in, in this particular audience, like I said, there's gonna be 300 people there. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you like? Okay, everybody, pull out your phones, hit this QR code. Do like, a give, do a giveaway, right? Mm -hmm. So you can say, hey, we're gonna do a drawing, and I'm giving away um, ten. 10 books or five books, you know, whatever, whatever makes it lucrative. This is what you don't want people to do is like, oh, it's 300 people here. What's the likelihood of I'm going to win, right? Mm -hmm. You want to make it lucrative. Also, again, offering community. Hey, I'm starting a group, you know, for dads mm -hmm. and sons, you know, called Save Our Sons. And if you, you know, I would love for y'all to be a part. It's nothing to join. It's free membership. Mm -hmm. Again, getting them to be a part, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to figure out what's really valuable that's going to make somebody give you their contact info. Mm -hmm. You have something, Christian? I, I would also ask the organization, because they ask you to come speak, you know, um, ask them if they can give you a list at the end of the day. Because okay. mostly, sometimes they do. Um, a lot of times if they're inviting a speaker, that's like an option. If they're, especially if they're not paying you to do mm -hmm. it, that's mm -hmm. an incentive for you to be like, mm -hmm. okay, I would love to do this. But, you know, I just want to make sure, one, can I get footage? Because we did talk about footage, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can I get footage? If y'all have a photographer or videographer, let me get access to that. And can I please get access to the sign-up list, the email list, so that you can utilize it for promotional purposes. Mm -hmm. And they should be fine with doing that. But I would typically, if you're not going with somebody, um, try to have a sign-up list there. So people that come in to sign up for more information, you're going to have the QR code. So we're hitting them multiple times. We have them at the door. You have them on the QR code, mm -hmm. and then you're going to also, um, you know, try to do something like a giveaway. Mm -hmm. I would say, like, a court, like the book, if you want people to purchase the book, let's be clear. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to try to give away so many books or whatever like that, mm -hmm. but you might want to incentivize with something that you know for sure they're going to want. It could be like a $50 Walmart card or mm -hmm. something like that, where it's like, you know, I want to encourage fathers to spend a day with their sons, or I want to encourage you to have a you know a shopping spree or something like that i'm giving this away because mm -hmm. that's what i'm doing in the goodness of my heart this is what my book promotes and so it has to be something that they're truly really interested in in order for them to sign up for it yeah so they might not be interested in the book because they're just not hearing about it right mm -hmm. and we know people everyone doesn't read it's everyone okay doesn't. <laughs> everyone doesn't read you know you gotta get an audible version of it but you know they're gonna shop Mm -hmm. we, we know what they're gonna do. Yeah, yeah Father cool. Sunday. I feel like that's dope. Yeah, like a Father Sunday, you know. Yeah, I one of my main things was that the hurdles that you mentioned, like mm -hmm. a lot of people don't read, so I, I the book is heavily illustrated. Yeah, you know, so I try to grab people's attention. And one thing while I'm sitting here building with you all, I'm thinking like, do you think it's a good idea as far as I get a QR code? about the size, something like that, and sit it on an easel while we're there so yeah. they can just come by and yeah. zap and keep it moving. Yep. Absolutely. Move you're going to have uh, flyers. 
you know, to give out. Ask them if they have a gift bag. So you can put your business card in there with the QR code inside the bag. Like, you mm-hmm. got seven times, literally. We're talking about, again, sign up sheet as soon as they walk through the door. We're talking about the QR code as soon as they walk through the door. You're saying it. You're asking them to pull out their phone, scan it while you have it up on whatever presentation. You're going to do the giveaway. And then, you know, you have it inside the bags that's going to be given out at the event. That's five times right there mm-hmm. already. You can also ask the organization if they're willing to purchase a certain amount of books yeah, to include in the registration bag. That's, that's one of the things. A couple of my clients are married to Falcons players, and uh, I'm in the process. Once I get the book, I'm going to sit down with them, mm-hmm. the organizations. Like, you know, I'm, I need your organization to go ahead and purchase it. So that, yeah. That's something yeah. I already have. Ask them to send it out to their email list, too. Again, mm-hmm. When they put out their thank you for people to attend, ask them to give the link to your book. Hey, yeah. And here's the thing, right? Especially when you get into, here's another gem for y'all. Especially when you get into using influencers to promote your stuff, mm-hmm. either you or have your team, which hopefully will be a part of your team, um, do the work for them, right? So yeah. I don't leave, when I partner with somebody, I don't leave it to them to write the emails or to write the copy for the social media, unless they're a marketer and they, you know, they know what they're doing. And the reason for that is because you want to make sure you control the narrative of what's, of what's being put out, and that there's being care put out behind it. Sure. If you got an organization that got a million and one things going on, you know, they may just say, "Hey, this is the speaker," and put a whole bunch of other stuff. No, I want my uh, email specifically for me to go out to the email list. Last suggestion is you also can ask organization is, hey, can I do a private Q&A just for the attendees at the event? Like maybe if they, I don't know what their schedule is, but, um, you know, maybe during lunch, can I do a, a, a lunch, a chewing Q&A? You know what I'm saying? Like maybe if there's a room off to the side that they're not using, like people could come in and have lunch and you could kind of talk about the book, but really promote the book. Mm-hmm. Cool. A lot of great information. Okay. Feeling good about this right here. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Nick. No problem. Look forward to working with you, brother. Yes. How you feeling? How was the session with Nick? Like, tell me. I'm feeling fantastic. I'm feeling informed. Nick is a ball of information, and I'm feeling real full right now. Absolutely. So feeling good about the connection. Perfect. So like what's your next steps? What are you what are you gonna do right now? Next step I'm gonna go home and still brainstorm with some of the information that I got and uh, figure out the soft launch, you know. So again, a lot of information that was just given to me. Okay. So, so what was a favorite thing that Nick told you during this session? Like what stuck with you the most? Everything stuck right now. The soft launch is the main thing because that's the next phase. So I'm stuck right there first. So step at one step at a time. Okay. Soft if you could give them between stars, one to five, what, what, what would you give them right away? Listen, I'm very impressed. Not just because he's an old friend of mine, but very, very impressed at the professionalism, the knowledge, very knowledgeable. And I mean, yeah, very impressed about everything that he spoke on. So five stars. Perfect. All right. Well, let's go get out there. Let's launch a book, okay? Let's launch it. Let's Perfect. do it. Stars. Stars. Hey. <laughs> so I feel like the session with Jeff went good. The thing is, is that I worked with Jeff when I was a front desk agent at Marriott. And just to see like the path that we've both taken and we're doing something completely different than when we started, it's amazing. Which should also be a testament to you that there is room for you to operate in your passion and your purpose and in the vision and gift that you were given by the universe or God or whatever you identify with. And so walk in that, be excited about it and put a strategy behind it. Did you like that episode? Not only do I want you to click like and subscribe, but I want you to binge watch the next episode right here.